Super. Right. So for our November 22 case study, right, we have uh, fireworks, right? So our, our, our case study is about what? It's about fireworks, right? So I'm sure you guys at least would have glanced through the prezi, right? So our company name is what? Our company name is fireworks. So what do you, I mean, what comes to your mind when you, when you listen to this word fireworks, what comes to your mind? Any, okay. Be, feel free to share your thoughts. Feel free to share, uh, whatever that comes to your mind. When you hear this word fireworks, what does come to your mind? Yes. Let's, let's, let's take this forward as a discussion type, right? So I told you in the first session also, let's be very interactive because, uh, you know, it's it's a case study, right? You might you might un, you might uh, have certain things which I don't get, and I might get certain things which uh, you guys haven't thought of. So it it has to be a knowledge sharing process. So let's interact for that, right? Let's interact from that, for that, right? Something hot hot, very good. Yes, firecrackers, good. A difficult situation, okay, right? Firecrackers. What else? When you listen, when you see this word fireworks, I mean it's reasonable, right? I might get an idea. Okay, look at this. This might be a fireworks manufacturing company, right? This might be a company. Any, I mean, it's anywhere related to fire. So it's hot, hot. So that's a good definition, Sampat. I like that. Something hot, hot. Very good, right? So yeah. So you could you could get multiple meanings, right? You could get. Uh, multiple visualizations when you read this word fireworks. Right? I mean, even when I saw it first, be before I read it, I thought it was related to firecrackers, the, whether this was a, you know, firecracker manufacturing company. So if, if so, it's a very highly seasonal business. You don't have sales all throughout the year. That was a huge problem to me. But when I scroll through, it's a completely different case study. It's a completely different case study. So what is our case study about? What is our case study all about? Yes, if someone has if someone has uh, gone through it, very good. It's about grills, right? It's about outdoor grills, more or less, right? It's a outdoor grill company. We sell outdoor grills. So then comes the question: What is an outdoor grill? What is an outdoor grill? Right? Yeah, kind of seasoning. Good. So what is what is an outdoor grill? At the context of it, what is an outdoor grill? What do you use it for? What do you use it for? Yes, any, uh, you know, travel enthusiast in the, in the class, I'm sure you would know it. Right? Yeah, barbecue, right? BBQ, very good, right? For food, yes, something related to food, right? So, so any, any, you know, uh, it was uploaded on the Telegram group. Tiran, are you part of it? Tiran, are you part of the Telegram group? If so, it is shared on the group. If not, let me share it on the chat box. Yeah, Tiran, it's there on the. It is seen as a pinned message on the Telegram group. But anyway, I have shared it on the chat box. You can download it. You can download it. Right. Okay. It's in the LMS as well. Good. So, it is an outdoor grill company related to food, BBQ, traveling, gatherings. So, those are the social aspects of it. You have to... Uh, have an understanding about when when I say fireworks. Okay, it's manufacturing outdoor grills. It's related to you know uh, the social aspects of it are into more or less uh, trips, gatherings, BBQ, outdoor food parties, right? You know, little little celebrations when friends get together, right? After some time, anyone who has come from abroad or they go on a trip or a picnic for uh, about two three nights. I'm sure there would be a few travel enthusiasts here as well, 
Uh, I myself is a travel enthusiast. I love traveling, right? So, I mean, we 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 love to you know have a BBQ, right? In the in the, in the night, right? Where there is either you go on to the top of a mountain, right? You spend the night there, put some tents there, you now put a BBQ there. So that that's a that's a that's an experience which is really you know touching, right? I mean, you have to have at least once of that experience, right? It's really great, right? So, so we are, our company, what does it touch? Does it touch a need? Does it touch a want? Does it touch, you know, a social aspect uh, of its target customer base? I want you to give some thought onto it. Are we touching a basic need? Are we fulfilling a want? Or more or less, are we, you know, touching the social aspect uh, of life, social aspect of life? So where can you categorize a company into? Where does it fall into? Where does it fall into? Yeah, it, it touches more or less the social aspect of it when it comes to it, target customer base. So target customers would be, you know, who? People who love traveling, people who love, you know, gatherings, who celebrate every, you know, each and every event, be it a birthday, be it a promotion they receive, be it, uh, you know, whatever, the an entrance to university, completion of a degree. So every each and every small event, you know, you have some sort of a celebration. I mean, there are people like that, right? Even the slide, okay, buy a car, you give out a party, right? It's your birthday, you throw out a party, right? It's likewise, I mean, it's, it's more or less related to the social aspect of life, right? So kind of luxury but it's not i would i mean it's not at the extreme end of luxury also fazil if you agree with me right if i put the uh, you know draw a draw a line and put the okay this side the left hand side would be the affordable range of it the right hand side would be the luxury side of it so the corner extreme corner it's not there it's somewhere in the middle i would say i mean it's affordable to anyone right who is you know into this celebratory mood who is into this social aspect of i mean who are with i mean more or less socialized who love to socialize right who have you know i mean who really enjoy being part of you know celebrating events you know being part of uh, you know uh, you know celebrations getting around with friends right those those i mean that's the type of the social group we are looking at so you need to be very here, now, since we are not addressing a need of a customer, we need to be very, you know, careful about the social aspect of the target customer base, right? I mean, it's it's more or less about the demographics that we, have, we need to look at. More or less the demographics we have to look at. So these demographics are going to, you know, understanding these demographics is very important. Because if you don't understand the demographics of your customer base, you don't know, okay, what is going to be a marketing strategy? Are you going to do a targeted marketing? Which channel are you going to use for marketing? Are those customer base more or less in Facebook or more or less do they refer newspapers? I would say they are in Facebook. They are in social media. You have enough and enough and more groups. Traveler to travel, co to, you know, you name it. You know better than me on social media. Enough and more what, uh, Facebook groups related to traveling. Right? I, I would just suggest you just go and join one or two. It would be very important for our case study. Right? Girls and boys here, if you if you are not into traveling, at least get that experience virtually. Right? Go join some Facebook groups related to traveling. Right? So there are enough and more multiple groups which are related to traveling where they post videos of their journeys how they do the camping, how do how they enjoy by having, you know, small grill, a barbecue, some fun with some music and all of that. I, I mean, you should get added to it. That's when you start to understand, okay, this is my target customer base. These are the type of people who are always traveling. The 25 to 35 age group, is it mostly, what, what's the gender of it? What are the income levels? Who are they? Are they students? Are they undergraduates? Are they just entering the job market or are they matured people in the job market so those things are very important for us to get an understanding gauge about our customer base i mean forget about the case study forget about your e1 f1 p1 
if you don't know whom you are serving i mean how are you going to come up with strategies and say look here you tell the examiner look here we need to do this xyz we need to market it in the social media channels right if you are not aware it you will say look here we need to go for traditional marketing market your product in radio market your product in tv market your product in the newspaper no that's not going to work given that our target customer base the demographics of our target customer base is different so i just wanted to give you some insights on starting with this word itself name of the company itself as to where you need to stand what should be your stance in terms of understanding the demographics understanding our target customer group and recommending strategies according recommending strategies according so i'll not go into the overview of the case study which i discussed last week the recording will also be available for you on the lms what is the proportion of theory what is the proportion of applications and business related stuff all of that is available in the all of that is available in the lms the first recording the rec- the recording of the first lecture we had last friday right so from there on i'm taking another step so they are also i'm discussing about the course overview what and what are we going to cover right so today we will start with the pre scene analysis right if i quickly give you a heads up this is our core pre scene analysis so what are the documents related to our pre scene analysis know your pre scene and the deep dive right number 2 is a industry analysis so what is the document relating to the industry analysis know your industry kyi then we have our most critical mocks 1 to 8 right so let's let's not focus on mocks today right from next week onwards we'll be slowly stepping in into these mocks right then we have mocks 1 to 8 we have a financial mock for you to get familiarized with whatever the accounting related stuff then we have a power mock right which is which is a summary of your e1 f1 p1 then we have our possible issues which we discussed towards the latter part of the session where we try to you know predict what could come up at the exam what could be the scenarios that could turn up at the exam right so these are the i would say main main documents which we will be using for our course in addition to this you need to do a past paper analysis which will also give you you know i mean a past paper analysis which will build more or less give you confidence mm-hmm. in terms of where you stand with the knowledge with what you have done right how what has been tested in the past what is likely to be tested in the future so you do a past paper analysis of about two sessions more than enough for you to get some confidence look here okay i'm i'm confident in answering these questions that could be towards the latter part of the session right so first two to three weeks we will focus on these two then it will be a roller coaster ride on the mocks right it will be a very you know rigorous ride because how many weeks we have for the exam how many weeks do we have for the exam how many weeks do we have for the exam this week then from october we have 1 2 3 4 5 4 5 i mean almost 7 to somewhere 7 to 8 weeks right 7 to 8 weeks so we take off about 2 to 3 weeks because in this 2 to 3 weeks we have to discuss our refresh theories we have to discuss our refresh theory which is e1 f1 p1 so so that you have an understanding of what are the refresh theories when you answer the mock paper so let's try to finish point number 1 2 and 6 as soon as possible then it will be all about mocks it will be all about mocks so or from the mocks we will be taking areas and discussing reviewing with you you will have to write them in exam conditions it will be marked you will have a one to one session to understand where you stand where you need to improve how you need to structure your answers to all of that right so to make a start today we will start with the pre scene analysis we will start with the pre scene analysis right okay so 
any any questions so far so we did have a quite a brief discussion on the topic on the brand of our company which is fireworks what is fireworks who should be our target customer group right basically our product all of them so any any clarifications with regards to what we've discussed so far any clarifications okay in saudi you're having winter so maybe that's that would be a good time right to make use of grills right you stay indoors get a grill you know do some uh, hot hot related stuff when you uh, at least when you uh, you know uh, defined it right so yeah we have some form of season uh, an impact from seasonality also we'll discuss that as we discuss on the present further right so others are we are we clear up to this point are we clear up to this point? Any questions? Good. Everybody. So I want everybody's response just to make sure that you are engaged, just to make sure that you are clear, no doubts, for us to move forward, starting off with the pre analysis. Great. Great. So let's have that interaction going, right? Here and there, I'll be asking a little bit of questions to see whether you are, you know, uh, attentive, whether you have been paying attention, whether you are clear to all of that. So quickly, uh, within a few seconds, you have to acknowledge, right? Dasha, great, great. Within a few seconds, you've got to acknowledge it. Right. So we will start with the pre-seen analysis. So this is our content. So we'll go through them one by one. And this is critical, understanding our role. So what is your role in this company? So, you know, you know, some context, you don't know the entire, uh, you know, the structure of the company, what it does, you don't know. You just know that this is a company selling outdoor grills. You know, the social side of it, you know, who is our target customer base. That's it. You don't know anything about the company beyond that. You don't know anything. I'm assuming. I'm sure you guys are so, you know, enthusiastic guys where you would have read the pre scene before me. Very good. Right. So for the moment, I'm assuming. You guys know just this little part of the company and now we are stepping into the, we are diving into the pre -Z. We are diving into the pre -Z. So what does it say? My role, your role in the company. I mean, when you know, I mean, for you to recommend a strategy, you need to understand, okay, what is my part in it? If you are a product manager in the company, you should know, okay, I need to manage the product life cycle of my outdoor grill. Right. I need to manage the inventory turnover. I should make sure that I don't have too much of inventory. So too much of inventory, meaning cash is tied up in inventory. I have working capital issues. So you as a product manager, you are responsible for those decisions. Right. So likewise, what is your role? So you are who? You are a finance officer. Oh. So you are a finance officer working within the finance department of fireworks principally involved in the preparation of management accounting information and providing information to managers to assist with decision making. Who are you? You are a finance officer, obviously attached to the finance department, attached to the finance department. You are a finance officer. Let's see whom you are reporting to as we go forward. For now, you are a finance officer within the finance department. So now what is the expectation from you? What are your job roles? What are the objectives that are that have been set in your job role? I mean, any job role will have a set of objectives, right? If you are a product manager, to manage the product's life cycle, to make sure inventory turnover is not less, not greater than thirty, to make sure proper computer analysis is done before product launch. Likewise, you will have a set of objectives. Now, you as a finance officer, you will also have a set of objectives. Look here, this is what I need to perform. So let's see what those objectives are. What should you perform in the organization being a finance officer? Right. Before I go into the pre -Z, can you tell me what is expected in an organization from a finance officer? Can I have some answers? What is expected from a finance officer in an organization? Now let's, I mean, you, you are reporting to the finance manager. So meaning you have a team with you. So what is expected from that team? What is expected from that finance officer's role? Is he expected to 
approve the annual accounts or is he expected to prepare the annual accounts? Very good. Assisting in preparing financial statements. You are part of preparation. Right? Management information systems. Very good. You take information, extract information from MIS, do variance report, do data visualizations and present it to the senior management. Look here, this is where we stand in terms of our budget. This is our uh, budgeted sale. This is our actual. If there is a variance, why is that variance occurring? Is it because our product is not performing well relative to the competitors? Is it because we need to do an adjustment to price? Right? Provide management accounts for decision making. Very good. Right? No, now, don't forget, you also have some management accounting responsibilities. Just because you're a finance officer, your role is not limited to financial accounting. I like that. Management accounts is very important. That's where you do your costings to resource optimizations to resource allocations to budgeting to relevant costing to all of that. Right? So you are expected to do all of that. Management reporting for short term decisions. Very good. So ad hoc decisions. Now let's say, okay, you, you there's a small competitor and you are trying to acquire him in the grill market. You'll have to look at the financial statements of the competitor, provide a report to the management saying, look here, it's, whether it's feasible or not. Are they financially strong or not? Forget about acquiring a company. You might have XYZ, three suppliers, which you need to select one. You need to do a financial analysis of their inventory days, payable days, uh, receivable days. What is their working capital cycle? Right? What is their sales? What is their cash position? Those are ad hoc reporting. I mean, every day you, to, you don't have to do those things, no. One, let's say one supplier has played havoc. You need to replace him. So there are multiple options. You need to evaluate them and tell the management, look here, X is the best supply we have to go with. Coordination with business operations. Very good. Now in finance, finance interacts with almost every division in the organization. I believe you agree with me. So, so can I see a heads up, a hands up? Who is working in the finance department? Out of our presentees here, attendees here today, let me see a show of hands who is working in the finance department. I mean, if you are, if you are attached to a company, if you are in the finance department, can I can I uh, see a hand going up? Just type and say, okay, yes, that you are in the finance department. Good, good, good. Very good. Navodya, Tiran, Doshe, Sampath. What about the others? If you are not into finance, just type, what is your department? Chaturi, good. Retail, very good. So, Fazil, you are into retail operations? Merchandising and apparel, wow. Amila, very good. Then, Zahid is from corporate finance, very good. Akila Fernando is from operations, wow, right? Siziba is from audit. So Siziba, are you from external audit or internal audit? Do you handle both? Which part of assurance is it? Is it external assurance or internal audits? So Akila, so operations in the sense, are you into manufacturing? Are you into a little bit of detail? Internal audit, very good. So you might be very familiar with the processes. You might be very familiar with the controls, right? You might be very familiar with the control environment that has to be there in the organization. Very good, very good, right? So we need all of those things. We'll discuss going forward, right? So we have a merchandiser too, very good. Overlooking the entire operation in a fintech company. Great, super, right? So. When it comes to merchandising, I'm sure you, you are very good at, you know, negotiating with suppliers, right? Working out a procurement strategy, right? Managing your clients, knowing their requirements, coming up with a plan so that you achieve their, you know, whatever their target price while making sure you optimize the bottom line of the company. So we have a very good mix. So I, I, I'm, I'm expecting a lot of input, right? From every one of you when we discuss this, uh, when we discuss the pricing, okay, Sampath, you're a cost controller, great. So you might be very familiar with, you know, 
costing systems to profitability analysis to standard costing to variance analysis to whatnot right great so now i don't have to you know talk about this finance role separately so you guys gave some good answers all relevant to whatever we are discussing and all relevant to be part of your role so if i sum up now as a finance officer right what does it say preparation of management accounting so preparing management accounting information providing information providing information for decision making expected assist with the preparation of financial statement assist preparation of financial statements and queries regarding financial reporting queries regarding financial reporting so this is what is there in the prezi you need to prepare management accounting information provide information for decision making assist the preparation of financial statements and answer queries with regards to financial reporting so if i am to if i am to relate this to your theory these two aspects which part of it where does these two fall into they fall into your f1 so where does these two fall into where does these two fall into your p1 right and a little bit of e1 as well right so this is your breakup so i told you in the first session if you remember out of most of the questions based on the analysis i have done on the past papers right 60% of it will be based on p1 right i would give a equal weighting to the others 20% of f1 20% of e1 60% will be from p1 so let's let's pay a little bit more attention to p1 when we discuss the refresh theory so e1 refresh theory our e1 lecturer will do it for you owen will take you through the e1 refresh theory f1 and p1 i will do it alongside the course alongside the course right so this is our role very critical very important to understand right what is expected from you your objectives so you are involved in management accounting providing information for decision making assist in the preparation of financial statements and answer queries related to financial reporting right so at the start itself let me reiterate to anyone who is joining today right remember if this is your ocs exam right if this is your ocs exam let me break it up 70 30 So anyone who was there last week can you answer what is 70% what is 30% theory and applications where does where do we stand where do we stand so 70% is theory 70% is theory 30% is your application right so don't forget this you need to work with this in mind therefore from now itself i gave you all i told you to start from last friday itself i'm not sure how many of you started but it's not too late start now start today start tomorrow right start refreshing your theories start refreshing your theories don't wait until we do it for you we will do it for you don't don't worry about that so if you start now by the time we discuss in class you will have a million questions to ask okay what is this how is this related to costing right what if this variable is changed you will have a you will have questions to ask that is when our refresh theory dis- discussion becomes fruitful that is when our refresh theory discussion becomes fruitful so i want all of you to start revising your theories start revising your theories it's not too late start now start today start tomorrow so that you will be comfortable by the time we take a trans by the time we do a transition into our mock papers remember mock papers are a simulation of your real exam we are making you ready for the exam so for you to do that you have to have a understanding about your theory so therefore start now start refreshing your theory so by the time we trans do a transition into the mocks move into the mocks you are comfortable with it you are comfortable with it right so just a quick heads up on that just a quick heads up on that so i believe everyone is now clear with what is expected from you 
on what your role is on what your role is right now coming on into the company background so this is where we are really trying to look at the essence of this company what is it about right so let's start with the history history starts here so to give a overview of the company it designs manufactures and sells a range of outdoor grills so we design we manufacture we sell so we are we are an entirely you know company that is doing from scratch from zero we do everything until we get the finished goods and until it is sold to the customer meaning we have control over the entire value chain i think if i say likewise you will be very clear we have control over the entire value chain from designing so you might have a sample room where you you know these are come up with designs there might be an r and d team who is doing research on okay what are the trending outdoor grill designs what are the trending expectations most of it is about using charcoal is there a different alternative source of energy we could use to heat it up that would be the role of this design team r and d team you know they will have a sample room do samples keep it here and there get the customer feedback get the management feedback right likewise that's separate up design that is the product design stage number 2 once that design is approved it flows to the manufacturing so you do some samples prototypes get the approval get the feeling of how the product is like you know maybe you might have a set of premium customers who always buy the new one that is introduced by you you give the sample to them to experience and let, tell them to come back to you with some feedback okay what are the changes we have to do here is the is does it take lot of time to heat it up if so what are the changes we could do right can we change the material used in the outdoor grill if it's if we are using stainless steel what are the other alternatives can we use aluminum right can we use another type of steel so those are the questions this designing team will have those are the questions this designing team will have then manufacturing once the design is approved it comes to manufacturing you create a bomb what is a bomb a bill of materials right you create a bomb for design 1 design 2 design 3 you will have separate separate bombs what is a bomb the bill of material will state a to z what are the materials required to manufacture this design that is simply a bill of materials it will state a to z what are the materials required to produce this outdoor grill design so then there will be a manufacturing process through which the this goes from raw materials to the finished goods and it comes up it, it gets packed and the finished good is there that is the role of the manufacturing team you get the design from the designing team do a bill of materials put it into production do the production run finished good comes out do the packing leave it that is manufacturing part number 2 now number 3 product is designed now it's also manufactured you have the finished good with you <coughs> you have the finished good with you now what should you do you have to sell right how are we going to sell how many sales channels do we have do we sell it directly to cust- directly to agents do we sell it directly to distributors do we sell it through our website those are the questions now you have to ask yourself how are we selling this product i mean these products are not there in the supermarket for you to go and pick it up put it in your uh, you know shopping cart and check out right so uh, where where can we find these products right that should be the question now running in your head so these are the three main functions of fireworks three main functions of fireworks designing manufacturing and selling designing manufacturing and selling how we sell let's look at it as we go further on the prezi the company is based in beeland or oh, this is our country of origin beeland a country in europe which has the b dollar as its currency so we are where, where are we located in which part of the world we are in europe 
we are in Europe. So now I told you at the start, we need to understand and identify the demographics, the social elements of our target customer base. Now we can further refine that to the European continent. Earlier we spoke about the target customer base in general. It was a whole su whole uh, subset. Now we can go into it and say, look here, out of that whole customers who are interested in this uh, segment of the products. Now we go in and we filter it to only Europe. I am serving in Europe. What are the characteristics of my customers? Who are my customers? What are their expectations? What are their price points? Do they go after brands or are they concerned only about cost? Right? How frequently do they change the grill they use? So those are the questions now you need to ask yourself. Those are the questions now you need to ask yourself. So we are in Europe. Now let's let's you know uh, limit our customer demographics to that European region. What type of customers are we serving? Are we serving? Right? The products that we sell are movable standalone grills. So it's it's portable or in other words, movable. You can take it from one place to another, which is good. I mean, no one is interested in buying a grill which you can which is static, which is just kept in one place. You have to go there always to cook. No, you don't like it. For that, you have home, you take you put something on the gas cooker or the induction cooker, you cook it off and you are done. So why do you want a grill to have, be static? So that's very good. It's removable, it's portable, right? Located wherever the user wishes in an outdoor setting. Wherever you want, you can take it. So the next question is, how portable is it? Can we, you know, fold it to about four or five, put it in a bag and take it? Or I don't understand here being movable. Because if you have to lift it up and take it to place by place, I'm sure no one would be interested. If you're going on a picnic, or a tour, you either go on a van or a SUV or a whatever, right? So you need to have some compact space to, you know, nicely fold this up and place it. So if this is going to be lifted up and kept in another place, I don't like it, right? But I like it if you can nicely fold it, right, to the least, to the leanest possible, put it in a bag and take it. Which one do you prefer? Do you prefer, you know, yeah, we have to consider ease of use. Very good. Lifting it here and there, that's not ease of use. It will take a lot of space in the vehicle you're going. Right? And it might, you know, go this way, go that way. It might get damaged. We don't know. So the ease of use, the portability has to be, you know, very uh, customer friendly. Customer friendly. You should, you should get a desire, you should like to take that here and there. You don't, you should not see that as a burden. No, look here, I have to take this also. Then I need a lot of space. No. When you say, look here, let's take this, put it in, and we're going to enjoy. I mean, that has to be, that has to be the customer sentiments. So ease of use is very critical. Ease of use is very critical. So that is a quick overview of what are companies, of what are companies. Now, where, when did when were we founded? 1984. So, how old are we? How old is the company? How old is the company? We are 38 years old. We are 38 years old. It means we are, you know, quite a matured company. Been in operation, been in existence for 38 years. It was founded by David and Debbie Wheeler after their experience the widespread outdoor grilling, eating and socializing lifestyle in North America while on holiday. So two people have found a company. Who are they? D and D. David and Debbie. D and D have founded our company in 1984. So when, how did they get the business idea? So they were on a holiday to North America. In North America, they saw how people were socializing, the gadgets, the equipment they were using in their socializing events. And they got an idea, look here, then let's try this in Europe. Why not we try this in Europe? Right? Anywhere in the country, be it whatever the country, 
there will be people who love you know traveling socializing to all of that i mean look at the context of sri lanka whatever the economic crisis we are in right do you see a reduction in the number of travelers in the night mail train to badulla never it's jam packed these days for you to book a seat for you to book a seat you need to book two two months in advance at minimum now we launched this al odessi train and anyone who has gone anyone who has gone in this al odessi train Ah, great. So, so the booking time. Can you guess the booking time of that? It the booking opens at twelve in the midnight. I mean, I'm not sure how. When did you book? Exactly. It's it's hundred and fifty seconds. It's hundred and fifty seconds. So, be it whatever the country you're in, right? There are people. These are, you know, that segment, that type of group of people who are, in, who, I mean, who are really into socializing, who love traveling, right? I mean, even mostly look at the traveling would be those who are, you know, uh, you know, earning a decent amount of income, or those who are in undergraduates who do, you know, part-time jobs, teach others, you know, do deliveries, all of that. They just save some money, they travel. right so wherever in the country you have an opportunity for this wherever in the world i would say right i'm sure uh, i'm sure siziba and uh, oh we have uh, dotche joining us internationally and also rijwana if i'm not mistaken so i'm sure you guys also agree with me in your respective countries i'm sure you would have observed these things right so now these people have also got this business idea when they want holiday right how many of us get business ideas when we are on holidays how many of us get business ideas when we are on holidays i don't think i mean we never think about business right we just think about you know relaxing chillaxing you know having fun all of that right but these people get a business idea on while on holiday and they've converted that to a company great right so what were these people doing before before finding before you know launching fireworks before launching fireworks what was their roles let's take a look at it let's take a look at it david was an executive in marketing debbie was a production manager in a metalworks company good combination one knows how to market the product one knows how to produce it very good combination after receiving an unexpected inheritance right yeah yeah you get one when you are looking for a product but can't find it good so after receiving an unexpected inheritance so they might have got a huge sum of money as part of their inheritance they decided to invest in a small manufacturing plant and form fireworks oh they are investing in a small manufacturing plant so who do you think this david and debbie would be are they brothers and sisters are they two brothers two sisters are they you know in laws are they husband and wife who do you think this david and debbie is yes who do you think this david and debbie is siblings great yes everyone speak up who do you think david and debbie is definitely started as friends a couple siblings very good very good i want i want answers who do you think this david and debbie are d and d couple friends good yeah I, i'm sure they would have started off as friends and now they are a was <laughs> a father and son so david is a gen to me sampath i think debi should be a girl right so if you said father and daughter i would have agreed to a great extent right friends right so i they i mean they would have started as friends so when do they receive an unexpected inheritance maybe at marriage they would have received an unexpected inheritance so now these two are a couple they are married together now they have formed a company called fireworks they formed a company called 
fireworks. So maybe they were already married, right? Then when they were on holiday or engaged or whatever, right? So they were on holiday. Now they have, you know, a couple. Now they've started this company called fireworks. That is the context behind the, to the initiation, to the founding of fireworks, to the founding of fireworks. Now, the both of them are passionate about food and great outdoors and wanted to inspire others to experience the pleasure of the dining and entertaining outdoor lifestyle. I mean, how many of us, how many of us love to, you know, have an outdoor dinner, have an outdoor, you know, lunch or a breakfast? We all, most of the time we go on a vacation, we, you know, go to a hotel, have some, uh, you know, fun and then eat in the, eat from the buffet. We come back. But remember, there is a, there is a next level of fun, next level of enjoyment when you, you know, explore these things, when you explore these things. Dining and entertaining outdoor lifestyle. So outdoor lifestyles could be, you know, candlelit dinners. I don't want to, I don't want to elaborate saying when do you start having candlelit dinners, right? You know it. So candlelit dinners to, you know, I mean, at Cinnamon, at JKH, we did, we did a new, you know, sort of a uh, innovation, I could call it. Uh, breakfast by the reef, right? Where, you know, we have a, in one of the hotels in down south, right? You have a, you know, you know, you have the beach next to the hotel. So on the beach, there is a, you know, uh, there is a stone edge, which, uh, which you know, beyond that you can easily bath. There is, it's a very shallow space, not deep. So beyond the reef, okay, there is a little bit of rough sea, but you have a huge reef separating that rough deep area and the shallow area. So we, we gave an experience to the customers to go and sit on the reef and have their breakfast. I mean, that's a next level of experience, right? You sit on the reef, you have a table, chair, you know, your buffet is laid, a breakfast by the reef. Yes, right? So, I mean, that was, that was a new initiative which attract quite a lot of consumer interest. Quite a lot of consumer interest. Then we have breakfast by the, you know, boat where you sail on a boat and you have it on the, on the go, right? Then, uh, so this outdoor lifestyle, guys, is very interesting to explore if you are a travel lover, right? I want all of you to be travel lovers for the next eight weeks, right? You know, at least experience it virtually, as I told you, join FB group, right? Ex you know, do some search, right? What are the best destinations for your uh, traveling? <laughs> yeah, great. Right? What are the best destinations for your traveling to all of them? I mean, this is the time we could, you know, travel and explore, right? Not, you know, not once we have more commitments. Lesser the commitment, more the time you have to explore things. So take use of that time. Make use of that time, right? Don't, don't, don't allow regret to come to you after you pass that particular phase of time. Right? So try to explore these outdoor lifestyles, right? You know, you don't, you always, you might go on a vacation, take a hotel, you know, sleep on it in uh, at the night, right? But why don't you try? Do a tent out, right? Go to the uh, jungle, do a tent. S uh, spend the night there, right? You can see elephants approaching, right? You can see, you know, multiple source types of animals coming to you, right? So, so you know, explore, right? That's when you get, you know, your, your stress to your, any signs of depression to, you know, that relaxation would be at another level, right? It's not just you, you know, spending a very casual vacation at a hotel or at a very, you know, organized official place to whatnot. Right, so go to these unofficial places, right? Be it a hike, right? Be it, uh, you know, uh, in the middle of a jungle where you spend the night, right? Do all of that. So try all those things. Because outdoor lifestyle, I can guarantee it's, it's, it's a next level of experience. It's a next level of experience, right? So back to the prison. At the time, few inhabitants of Beeland owned an outdoor grill. Only few people owned outdoor grills at that time. So they identified a market gap. They identified a 
market gap for quality easy to use grid there was a market gap there was a market gap so only few people owned it but you could market it to x number of people so there was a gap so this gap is what dnd is uh, bridging it is dnd is trying to bridge this gap of outdoor grids right we bridge this gap of outdoor grids so launched in 1984 first one was a simple high quality design fold by charcoal you know charcoal right sold through specialist outdoor furniture retailers oh so is this the right person to sell our product what do you think is a furniture retailer the right person whom we could make use of to sell our product can i have some comments on that no i also i mean i also agree with it who would be the best person to sell is it a furniture seller is it a garden product seller is it a you know supermarket right is it a is it a metal works shop who do you think would be the ideal person to sell our product who do you think would be the ideal person to sell our product yes who do you think would be the ideal person to sell our product supermarket might be might be right not the large grills but the small to medium ones i believe uh, would be a good opportunity for us household item sellers yes very good home lifestyle outlets very good home lifestyle outlets yes i think that would be the ideal one right home life lifestyle outlets so that should be a question that is come, that should come to your mind is furniture retailer the right person to sell and market our product do they have the expertise do they have a similar product range right likewise and large garden centers all based in bilan as 1984 had a particularly good summer sales were healthy and as the product was of high quality fireworks established a good reputation following year saw a marked increase in sales great awareness of the fireworks brand so now we can see in the product life cycle what are we talking about in these last three lines which stage of the product life cycle are we talking about which stage of the product life cycle are we talking about yes which stage of the product life cycle are we talking about yeah it's more, more or less on the growth stage right it's growing business is growing so what is our main value proposition what is our main value proposition what is our main value proposition our commitment to what quality our commitment to quality right our commitment to quality has been our main value proposition which is driving now now it is driving the sales of our product driving the brand presence so we need to make sure that we preserve this composition of quality that we maintain this composition of quality right as the concept of outdoor cooking continued to gain in popularity in bilan fireworks expanded the range of products so now your sales are good you are coming up with new products so we are clearly in the growth stage of the product life cycle we are clearly in the growth stage of the product life cycle it offered in 1998 a gas fueled grill was added to the fireworks range more recently an electrically powered wood pellet grill was added so ideally when it comes to grill what you and me know is charcoal now they have gas fuel right then we have electrically powered like a, maybe similar to an oven your grill is electrically powered right so it's it's all about what so this paragraph talks about how we have excelled in product development how we have excelled in product development right how we have excelled in product development right so we'll go through this page and take a break maybe right i hope everybody is fine with only a few exceptions due to recession or exceptionally bad weather fireworks has experienced sales growth every year since its foundation so what are we seeing we are seeing a upward trend in sales since 
1984, right? In 2018, David and Debbie retired and the task of running was handed out to their youngest child. So this confirms that this is a couple. David and Debbie, father and mother, now is handing over their business in 2018 to their youngest child, Catherine Wheeler. So for how long have they run the company? For about 34 years, D&D &D have taken the company to where it is now. Now Catherine, their youngest daughter is taking over the reins from the father and the mother. Now, this is a, I mean, uh, do you agree with me? So this is, this seems like to me a family business, not a public limited company. So this should be a private limited company, which is run by a family, which is run by a family. So there could be problems going forward, right? There could be problems going forward. So hand it to their youngest child. So what would be the other children thinking of this handover? Are they expecting a return? Do they have an inheritance to this company? Going forward, if this father and mother passes away, what is going to be the stake of this company? Who is going to have the shares? Is it Catherine Wheeler? Or is it equally distributed among their children? So those are problems that could come up at the exam. Problems that would come up at the, at the exam day, David and Debbie might have faced an accident, they would have died. I don't know, I'm just guessing. Right? So there is a huge problem in this company as to who the ownership should go to. Right? So you are being asked to come up with, they have given this task to a third party independent company and you are, you are working with that independent, let's say an audit firm. You need to set the corporate governance guidelines to this company. You need to set Corporate governance guidelines to this company. So what are you going to do? You need to, you need to appoint a director board, have a balance of directors, executive, non-executive, have a separate CEO and a chairman, right? Have independent committees like audit committee, remuneration committee, nominations committee. Could be, a exam, could be an exam day scenario. We never know. So just be mindful about this family business. Just be mindful about this family business, right? So Catherine, the current CEO, spent her early career as a qualified chef working in top restaurants throughout Europe. So she might have a good, you know, contact base. So I'm, I'm okay with handing over the company to her. I mean, she's quite, you know, closer to our product. She has worked in top restaurants, meaning she would have a good, she would definitely have a good contact base. So prior to taking over, had worked at her parents' company for a uh, Before taking over, she had been in fireworks for four years. So she knows the processes. She knows the people. She knows what is being happening. Right? She is into the business. So she knows business insights. Right? She knows about food and cooking exactly. Right? It's, so it's, clo it's something closer to her heart. It's all about taking it forward from where her father and mother left off taking it forward from where her father and mother left off. It could be through product, in, through innovations, creativity, new products being launched, new products being added to the portfolio, you acquiring new competitors so that you expand your market share. So we don't know what Catherine's strategy is. We have to look at it. We don't know what sort of person Catherine is. We don't know what is the strategy she is going to pursue to take this company forward, to simply take this company forward. We have to be we have to watch out for that. Who is Catherine? What does she like the most? What is her plan for the company? Right? What are her qualifications? And to all of that, industry exposure to all of that. We need to be mindful because the company's direction will be decided accordingly. There is no director, there is no, you know, non executive director board to take those decisions, to approve them and take it forward. No, I believe. It would be more or less based on Catherine's thinking along with the agreement of the other board directors that this company will be going forward after D&D, &D, after David and Debbie, right? So she has many ideas for the future direction and growth. So we need to see, okay, what are the ideas? We need to understand what are the ideas? What is her strategy? Is she, is she going to grow organically? Is she going to, is she going to grow by acquiring? Expansion by acquisition, right? We don't know. We have to understand those things. Is she going to change the product 
uh, portfolio of the company? Is she going to start offering food in addition to the grill? I mean, it can. I mean, we can do that, right? We can do that, right? Okay. Along with the grill, we have a set of you know meal kits. I'm getting this meal kit because last time OCS case study was about meal kits. A meal kit is, let's say you want to do a barbecue on your trip. A meal kit will have all those pieces of chicken to whatever the meat you have cut properly. You know, you marinate it with whatever the pastes you want. All those pastes are available, so you just go there. It's in a since it's meat, you will get it in a chilled bag. You can uh, offer it along with the grill. Product development, product development, existing market. You are offering a new product as per the AMSOFT matrix. Right, as per the answer of matrix. So we need to understand likewise what is going to be Catherine's strategy going forward. What is going to be Catherine's strategy going forward? So operates from three sites located 10 kilometers head of his production and the distribution. Does not operate any retail outlet, so we don't have any of our own outlets. Right. 2021 sales were 68 percent through retailers 20 percent direct to customers to the website 12 percent to third party agents based on other countries so we do have a you know 12 percent of exports also we do have 12 percent of exports also majority is through the retailers right who have retail outlets in bland 20 percent we sell it through our website so we might have an e-commerce website so at the exam day, you should know what are the KPIs to measure the success, to measure the effectiveness of the website. What are the characteristics, features the website needs to possess to ensure customers come there. They are able to easily navigate the type of user interface, right? Then the checkout procedure, it has to be very smooth. Then the privacy of customer data, they do transactions with you. You have a huge base of customer data with you. Things like that. You have to be very careful, right? In the year, revenue was 76 million, which is good. GP was 32. So quickly tell me, what is our GP margin? What is our gross profit margin? Yes. What is our gross profit margin? What is our gross profit margin? 42%. 42% GP margin. It's a very good business, right? Profit before tax, 6.9. So what is my operating profit margin? What is my operating profit margin? Yes. What is my operating profit margin? 9%. So why is that? I am making a GP of 42 and I am making operating profit of 9 what do you think what do you think we have to improve on what do you think we have to improve on yes what do you think we have to improve on so we have sales we have cost of sales then we get our gp so below gp you have all other expenses from admin selling and distribution financing so after deducting all of this, this 42% becomes 9%. So here I'm having a huge chunk of overheads, which I have to do a cost cutting exercise, definitely. Right? The chunk of overheads are too high. Are too high. Which is not good for a business, right? Which is not good for a business. Meaning my fixed costs are high relative to variable costs. That's what this suggests. Even if I do, let's say, 100 million of sale, my GP will be, operating profit will be 9 million. Right? Why? A huge fixed cost structure. So we call this, what do we call this? Fixed cost to variable cost. What do we call this? This is called our operating leverage so what is better having more fixed costs or having more variable costs what is better for a business having more fixed costs or having more variable costs 
exactly having more variable cost is what will benefit for the business but here we are having more fixed cost to me operating leverage here is too high which is bad for the business so let's explore one by one what these items are when we go to the financial statement let's see what is causing this 42 percent which is huge to come down to nine percent which is very bad so to me i mean i i haven't gone into detail in the balance into the uh, PNL to the income statement but looking at it to me I believe operating leverage of the company is too high operating leverage is the ratio of fixed cost to variable cost is too high fixed cost composition is too high fixed cost composition is too high All right so let's see let's see let's go to the income statement and see one by one when we discuss so sold 192 grills so tell me what is the ASP of the company what is the average selling price of the company? So we made a 76.5 million revenue by selling 192.5 grills. So what is my average selling price of the company? Is it $397? Is it $397? 76.5 million divided by 192.500. Is it 397 dollars? Yes. Now, let me quickly go to our costing and see where do we do we have any pricing which matches our uh, average selling price. Sales revenue. These are volumes. Average sales prices are given for gas grills. So we need to look at this part of it, right? Because 68% is from retailers. So our pricing is here, right? Then in, when it comes to charcoal, we have more or less here. So 337. Then we have uh, electric grills. Again, let's look at the average selling prices here. 825 to 1200. So where do you think we are selling most? Is it gas? Sorry, is it electric? Is it charcoal? Is it uh, gas grills? Can you average it? I mean, based on the average which we got, where do you think, I mean, which type of grills are we selling the most? Is it gas? Is it uh, charcoal? Is it electric? Yes. I mean, those 300s, where does those 300s lie? Here and then again. Here. So where do you think, so we are selling more? Is it charcoal grills, gas grills or electric grills? Where are we selling, uh, which type of grills are we selling the most? Based on the average selling price we got. To me, it sounds like charcoal first then gas second and finally electric do you agree with me charcoal first gas second electric third do you agree with me i mean i just took the average selling price this might be wrong right we haven't gotten into the deep right we are still going deep so but looking at the average selling price to me i feel like this is the sales mix i feel like this is the sales mix. Do you agree with me? Do you agree with me? Or do you, don't you, I mean, if you are not agreeing with me, that's fine. We can discuss. So what do you think? What do you think? So based on the average selling price for 2021, I just came up with an assumption. This might be our sales mix. This might be our sales mix possibility. So do you agree with me? Yes or no? Guys, why is everyone silent? So do you agree with me or not? Simple question. So if we, if I if I go to the budget once again, I mean simple, right? Electric grills, we are planning 10,000. Here we are planning 115,000. Here we are planning 71. So 71 is to 115 is to 10. Gas, charcoal, electric. 
So this is just a uh, this is just what I told you, right? We are selling more of charcoal, then gas, and then electric. So this is in line with our next year budget also. These are budgeted data, right? This is in line with our budget also. So I believe you agree with me. I believe you agree with me. So that is a quick discussion on page number one of the prezi from where we started to what we are, the history of the company, who is leading now, our product range, the numbers on a, at a glance, profits to profit margins to average selling prices to all of that. So is there any question? Did everybody understand the discussion on page number one or are the page number three of the prezi? Can I have a quick heads up? Is everyone clear with the discussion or do you all have any questions, anything to add? It's your time now. Others, everybody, if you could give me a quick update. Great. What about the others? Good. Super. So shall we take a quick break? So then we need to talk about a little bit about our company and then move into the industry. What does the industry look like? Right. So let's let's just try to complete up until uh, we we'll look at the know your pre-scene after this. I'll just give you a brief and then we'll come back to see uh, the balance remaining. So we might not take too long since it's our first day today. Right, so we'll take a five minute break and be back so that five or eight minute break. Right, shall we be back by 8 4 p.m.? That's in my time, so basically an eight minute break. So we'll come back soon and we'll not take too long. Right, okay. 